took a wild start there. All right, UFC 152, prediction time. Going to go relatively quick. Um, Kyle Nope, Charlie Brennan already did this fight back when I did UFC 151, Brennan unanimous decision. Uh, Mitch Gagnon's Wild Watson taking Mitch Gagnon, which is a uh, it's gamble because I mean he's tremendously unproven. You know, lost to Brian Caraway in his debut, but you know he's the exact kind of guy that Wild Watson has a problem with. Wild Watson doesn't stop take him. I think Mitch Gagnon has what it takes to take him down, control him. When he his decision, well, because while well, Wild Watson lacks in wrestling, he seems to be. Reasonably hard to submit. Um, it's been done. Uh, just pull this bike find real quick. Yeah. Uh, TJ Dillashaw and way, way back, some dude named Enrique Senior back in 08. Submit him. But Gagno is not in the end. Actually, Dillashaw didn't even submit him. Wow. No, okay, so he's been submitted once. Yeah, so it's. It's pretty unlikely he'll get submitted, but, you know, taken down, controlled somewhat by Yuja Morning, taken down with ease, but E.J. Dillashaw, there's a pattern growing here. Um, getting on, you know, Seth Pazinski versus Simeon Thorson. Simeon Thorson is the better fighter, but seems smaller. Seth Pazinski's really tough, really big, really strong. We'll use all those things to get him. <laughs> um, I do not like Seth Pazinski, as you may have guessed, but... Guy gets it done. Uh, on to the prelim card on Sportsnet. Jimmy Hedis versus Marcus Brimage. Seeking Jimmy Hedis via submission in the second round. Marcus Brimage, questionable cardio, questionable ground game, questionable wrestling. Had the big, big win against Maximo Blanco, but it was because Maximo Blanco fought weird. We'll, we'll put it that way. We'll, we'll go with the word weird. Um... Jimmy Hedis, I like a lot of things about him. You know, he's got a good wrestling background. Uh, very good grappler. Energetic. Push the pace. Does all the things that Marcus Burmish generally has a problem with. Um, Stand-up needs work. But uh, give it time. Give it time. Sean Pierce and Lance Benoist. Taking Lance Benoist via unanimous decision. I just feel that younger, better, faster, more athletic fighter. Kind of better at everything than Pearson type of deal. Pearson's very well-rounded. Benoist is really well-rounded. Benoist did not look good against Seth Pazinski, though. So that's maybe something to keep in mind. But let's see if Lance Benoist can come out here and get this job done. Uh, Pearson's tough guy. You know, has some chinniness to him. But Benoist isn't really a knockout power puncher or anything. So Benoist decision. TJ Grant, Evan Dunham. Take a TJ Grant. Um... And I've gone back and forth on it a lot of times. And in fact, I might go back to Dunham before the fight happens. But here's the deal. If Evan Dunham can come out and take down TJ Grant and control him, he will probably win this fight because he's a better wrestler in on paper. And that's what he does. And he's a good gruff grappler that he can neutralize Grant on the ground. That being said, Grant's been very good against wrestlers at 155. Additionally, Dunham has a tendency to, when things start getting rough for him, he backs off, kind of tones it down, and loses. Uh, TJ Grant has the mental toughness that he, he will keep going for 15 minutes until you stop him. Um, he will be there. And that's kind of the intangible factor that I like about TJ Grant. I, I see Grant at some point hurting Dunham. From that point onwards, the fight kind of going very downhill to a great decision. But it would not surprise me if Dunham won, and I might go back on that at some point. Igor Prokryach versus the returning Vinny Maglis. Uh, Vinny Maglis, submission in the first round. Don't know why people are trying to talk about Prokryach a lot. Here's what I would say about Prokryach. Doesn't have takedown defense. When you're fighting Vinny Maglis... That's a bad thing. I know Vinny doesn't like to get hit. Vinny has great holes in his game. But the holes in Igor's game are just so perfect for Vinny to take advantage of. So that's my thought. Main card, Cubs Watson, Charles DeBronx, Oliveira. Taking Charles Oliveira probably by uh, submission. Cubs Watson has a tendency to put himself in danger and not think. Ironically, he's a Greg Jackson's fighter who has no game plan, it seems, most of the time. Go figure. Um, on the feet, 
he might be slightly better. Um, I think he does hit it harder. But, and on the ground, he's very good. But the fight with Ricardo Lamas was a good example of this. Uh, the Jens Pulver fight. Points of the Mack and Seminzer fight. Um, just keep going here, basically. Basically, any fight you've ever seen comes once and in. Uh, not so much the Aldo fight. That was just smashed down in the middle. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's in the end is he will put himself in danger. And DeBronx has shown a very good ability to finish people, particularly at featherweight. But even before that, you know, his lightweight run was really, really good. Yeah, he lost to Cerrone and Jim Miller. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, those are two very top-notch guys in the division. He's beaten Eric Wisely and Jonathan Brookins. Um, you could say Cub Swanson is by far above those guys. I don't really know about Brookins. I have mixed feelings about Jonathan Brookins. He at times shows me something. He's definitely tremendously one-dimensional, but at, at times he shows me the ability to be something. And then at other times he shows pretty much nothing. Um, that's kind of all there is really to say about that. Um, but yeah, I'm taking Oliver at some point catches something, we'll finish him. But it'll be a good fight. I'm looking forward to that fight. Matt Hamill, Roger Hollett, which was supposed to be Matt Hamill, Roger Hollett, then it morphed into Matt Hamill, Vladimir Machenko, and then back to Roger Hollett. Um, apparently the deal with that is Roger Hollett was contacted by Bellator about something about their right to match a contract to basically keep him from leaving to the UFC, which seems really stupid. Um, because they weren't planning to book him. They had, they had a similar issue with Tyson Nam. If you're not going to book a guy, let him walk. That's really all I have to say to Bellator. But I'm not, you know, I could talk about that for 10 minutes. Hamill on paper should win this fight. Uh, Roger Hollett has struggled with wrestlers in the past. He had that really ugly fight with John Hawk, which people keep alluding to as, you know, the worst thing they've ever seen. He also has had fights with Emmanuel Hardcore, Kid Newton, and Lou Pauly, both of whom beat him as well. Uh, well, he beat Hawk, but uh, both of whom beat him and are marginal wrestlers, I guess. Um, Hamill's better than those guys. I think he can get this done. The issue with Hamill is, is he mentally and physically ready? He's been retired. That impacts you mentally, and that impacts you physically. He looks good. I've seen some pictures of him. It looks like he's, you know, in uh, what passes for Matt Hamill fight shape. Um, but we'll see mentally. We'll see. But that being said, the smart money's on Hamill to win this probably via TKO. Hollett can be, I want to say chinny because he doesn't really get knocked out. But he's very hittable. And Hamill does have very heavy hands. So, yeah, Matt Hamill. Second round TK. Uh, Michael Bisping, Brian Stan. On one hand, yeah, Brian Stan could definitely knock out Michael Bisping. His chin is not that good. His record against guys who have heavy hands and good striking is not great. Uh, I don't count Chris Lee in that group, by the way. Um, that being said, Bisping is more well rounded than Stan. Um, I don't know if it's. Re the ground game is hard to say because Brian Stan at some points has shown that he does have a good ground game, but the problem is his takedown defense is lacking. And, of course, he got some made by Chelsea Hunt. So, it can't be that good. Um, I got Bisping by decision. I think that if Bisping runs into trouble on the feet, he has the ground option, whereas Brian Stan does not. And I think that's the thing, is if he can win this fight on the ground, he will. If he can win it standing, there's a chance of that. But I kind of favor Stan. Stan. Standing just because he seems to hit harder. Um, that's way better on that. Uh, Joe Benavides, Demetrius Johnson. Benavides, your name decision because, quite frankly, better than Demetrius Johnson. Uh, there's no other way to put it. I mean, basically, in a nutshell, both guys are wrestlers. Um, one trains with Alpha Male, one trains with AMC Pancration. Or has Johnson moved away from them? Ooh, just let me look that up real quick. One here. No, yeah. Still with AMC Pancration, Matt Hume's team. Love AMC Pancration, love Matt Hume. But Benavides is a better wrestler. He's a better striker. He's a better grappler than Demetrius Johnson. Um, Demetrius Johnson had all kinds of issues with Ian McCall that I just don't think Benavides would have. So, yeah, Joe Benavides, unanimous decision. 
Stoppage wouldn't surprise me with Demetrius Johnson. He, he's close enough to the point where I think he can keep this going. And then John Jones versus Vitor Belfort. Jones, submission, first round. Thank you very much. Um, mismatch. Tremendous mismatch between the reach, the age, the athleticism that John Jones brings. The fact that Vitor Belfort is coming back up to 205. The fact that Vitor Belfort does not handle um, mental pressure very well. Countless examples of that. Um, yeah, no, I, I just cannot, I can't see this fight going very long, and I can't see Belfort winning. Correction, I, if Belfort wins, this is how it's going to be. Poof! <laughs> and down he goes. Um, that's it. Uh, Vitor Belfort striking, I feel, has always been overrated on a technical level. He's very powerful, he's very fast, and I'm not going to take that away from him, but technical striking, I think, is a bit lacking. John Jones' is technical striking. Also kind of lacking, but he gets away with it because of the reach, the athleticism, and so on. The fact that he will throw in wild, wacky stuff for diversity, something that Vitor doesn't really do. Um, in terms of wrestling, i got to give it to Jones. In terms of grappling, you know, Vitor Belfort's a black belt, but he's a black belt who I've never been impressed with. So, there's that. Um, but yeah, those are my picks for UFC 152. I hope you enjoy. Have a good day.